Okay, we're gonna go through our plant list for today. It's uh, plants in my yard. So here's the list. We've got, it's separated by herbaceous, vines, shrubs, trees. Within each, there's the kind of the, the taxonomic grouping. So ferns, dicots, monocots. Within monocots is graminoids. All your vines are dicots. All your shrubs are dicots. The trees could be dicots or gymnosperms. So this is actually a fairly long list today. Uh, and it should be fun. We're, I'm not gonna go in order, um, but I happen to be at the first plant. So our first plant is ostrich fern. So here we've got our ostrich fern. Um, let me do a different one because that one doesn't show it as well. So here's a, a nice ostrich fern. What a neat thing about ostrich fern, you should be able to put your hand in the center here. A lot of people say you could put a, a vase inside of it. And, and that's a good diagnostic characteristic. You can see it for almost all of these. There's a couple when they're first coming up where you know it's a little harder to see that. But most of these, that's really obvious. The other good characteristic for ostrich fern, but it doesn't show right now because they're just opening, is if you look at the, the frond, this does it a tiny bit, but not really. Usually, usually um, a fern would be bigger. It would be more like a Christmas tree. So it'd have bigger, uh, leaflets, pinules at the bottom, and then smaller at the top. With ostrich fern, if you cut this in half, it would actually, you'll find some of them that are bigger up top and then narrower on bottom. And that's, that's like an ostrich leaf, and hence the name ostrich fern. But none of these are showing that very well. Ostrich ferns, super common planted fern in yards. And you can see it can be quite aggressive and take over a yard, which is great if you like ferns, not so great if you don't. All right, we're, uh, since we're over here, let's do, um, this is multiflora rose. So this is kind of your common weed rose. Um, rose family is easy because there's a bunch of characteristics, they don't always work, but thorns. And then it's got serrate leaves. And then you can see here, I don't know if, here's a, Here's a decent one. See these stipules? See the stipule? So those are projections of the, the, the petiole. Um, and that's unusual. Not many plants do stipules. So, so that's a good characteristic. These are oddly pinnate leaves. Serrate, oddly pinnate with good stipules. Um, and then it would have roses on it, but of course there's no roses right now. These are actually rose hips from last year. And, and and um, rose hips, um, I don't know, people put them in tea or whatever. You can eat them, um, they're not very good. Um, but in, in January, um, in January, all winter, you can eat them. So it's kind of fun on a trail in the winter to, to eat them. I get my kids to eat them, to shut them up during a trail because um, there's not much to eat in the winter. They taste kind of like a, a really dried out raisin that's been in the couch for maybe a year because that's pretty much what they are. Um, okay, so let's, uh, let's move over to the, over here. These are actually the, the fertile fronds from the ostrich fern, um, last year. So there's a bunch of them. Um, this, uh, this is not one you need to know, but this is an Ericaceae. You do need to know the family. So Ericaceae is common in bogs. We will see Ericaceae later when we go to the bog, but some fun characteristics. This one, they're little balls. So um, or they're, they're, you know, these little uh, lanterns, if you will, that hang down and then, um, so that's cute. They, they look like a blueberry. We should see blueberry flowers. They're not in flower yet, uh, but we should in the next week. And then they've got real leathery leaves. They're evergreen. So Ericaceae, good characteristic for the family. You don't need to know this plant. It's a, uh, say it again, beautiful. Pyrrhus. Pyrrhus. Um, then we've got, um, they're not open yet, but we've got two different species of trillium. Now they're real close to opening. So you can see the, the, the this is gonna open up and be real pretty. Uh, trillium are real real distinctive. Everyone just knows trillium because they're distinctive, pretty white flowers. But they do have these trifoliate leaves. Um, 
pretty distinctive. So here's a, another Trillium. Now these are horticultural varieties because obviously I bought them. Um, I didn't dig them up from a park. You shouldn't be doing that. Um, so here's the, the three leaves, but here's a horticultural mutant that's got four. So sometimes stuff in your yard is not the way it's supposed to look. But this one is interesting. Um, they haven't opened yet, but you can see this here. It's actually a nodding trillium. And we'll see some of those uh, when we go to Hager Park that, that they, that instead of sticking up, they nod, they, they hang down. So, so that's cool. Uh, trillium, right next to the trillium here, we've got mayapple. Mayapple are really easy because they're, they're peltate leaves. So they're like an umbrella. Here's the bud for the flower. Uh, the flowers aren't open yet. We'll see some pretty soon. Um, so, so mayapple. These are real common understory plants in forest all around here. Right next to this, they don't have the flowers, but see the, 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 the trout looking uh, leaves? They've got the mottled um, camouflage look to them. Those are trout lilies and those will have a pretty yellow lily-like flower, hence the name trout lily. Um, right next to it, since we're there, is um, this is your, th th they're not big yet, th they're just starting and th this will be a pretty, like a big, it won't get that big, but it'll get you know this big. Um, these are just opening, these are maidenhair ferns and um, real distinctive and and it, it's a good native it also is one you can buy at the plant shop um, just because we're here and I've got it here's another this is fun this is a this is a tulip it doesn't really look like your typical tulip it's called a nodding tulip a couple things we can go through um, you know this is a good monocot good um, parallel veins and then remember the three petals three sepals and so it if i look at it like this it looks like a tulip but but um, again it's not native you don't need to know it but it's a good lily aca or at least it used to be lily aca they split up the family um over here unfortunately these don't have the flowers um but i'm pretty sure that this was um dutchman's breeches so they would be real obvious they'd have white flowers that looked like um oh the funny hats the funny white hats that you know kind of look like this if you which is a good native and those would be early flowers so hopefully we'll see those when we go to the park next but they might have already been done um this is another ericaceae you don't need to know this one. This is, well, actually you do need to know this one, but it doesn't have flowers right now. We'll see some more later part of the yard, but these are leathery leaves, real leathery leaves, um, evergreen. So Ericaceae, again, the only place in Michigan we find Ericaceae is in people's yards or in bogs. Um, but so good Ericaceae. Uh, okay, so, so here's the same thing. This is another rhododendron. Um, I, I put rhododendron on the list with a P for planted because it's a really good example of, of uh, we've got some that are open in the other part of the yard. It's a really good example of Ericaceae that you have access to. There aren't a lot of Ericaceae around. Right here, this is an invasive. And I um, look at this and my, uh, I get annoyed because I actually planted this and now hate myself for planting it. Don't plant um, invasives. This is, um, this is an ivy. So English ivy, and it's um, it's pretty distinctive. It's evergreen, although it will lose its leaves in the winter and, and then kind of come back, but it can stay evergreen depending. And it's just a real common vine that people plant, and you'll find it in some forest next to where people live. It, it only reproduces asexually here, so it, it doesn't really like take over a forest, but it'll take over Starting from one spot, it can take over. Now here's a good native that I feel much better about taking over. This is uh, wild ginger. Wild ginger is really easy because it's it's just distinctive looking. See how this um, looks like a kidney-shaped leaf, 
Um, of course, I grab one that's got a ding to it. These will get a little bigger. I mean, they can get as big as this. Um, but you can see this real distinctive kidney shape. And then here's the flower starting. And I bet we'll see some in flower um, the, at our next, uh, when we go to Hager Park. And um, th they're little red flowers. And it's actually fly pollinated. So they don't really smell that bad, but they don't smell good. You're stepping on fiddleheads, honey. Um, so there's lots of little fiddleheads coming up. All these different ferns. I've got tons of different ferns. I love ferns. Um, so we got cute little fiddleheads just starting to come up. Uh, but those aren't ones you need to know. Okay. There's... I don't know if you can tell. Yeah, we'll skip that one. All right, so... Oh, um, right here that are our... our um, you guys should know this one. Uh, it starts with a V. Violets. So, violets, what you probably didn't notice before is, um, if I hold this right, you can see the spur on the back. See the little projection there? So, um, all violets have that spur. And then, something you probably never noticed before either is if you tear this apart, I don't know if you can see it, but oftentimes they've, they're bearded. They've got little hairs on them. And whether they have hairs and where they are will help you identify them. Uh, they might make a nice little rosette. Real distinctive flowers. Um, they don't have to be violet colored. We, we've got some white ones in the yard. There's some yellow ones that we, at some different parks we go to. Um, and then they've got these just heart-shaped leaves. What I typically do on Oh, when we do this in the in person, I would collect a, a violet leaf and a ginger leaf, and then I'll show you a bloodroot in a minute, and have you um, guess which one is which, because they're they're similar, but they're they're quite distinctively different. See how this isn't that that flat like the ginger. Thing. So I'll just put a ginger right next to it to show you. See how they're they're quite a bit different. Plus, this one's entire. This these are serrate. So ginger is entire, but it has that flat. That's not flat. It's, and that's why this is so unusual. Okay, so that's your ginger. Um, you don't want to eat the wild ginger. It's not, it's not, it's not a substitute for real ginger. Not sure why it gets that name. Okay, um, here's one of the trillium just starting to open. It just starting. So uh, we should see lots of better trillium. Over this way. Here's um, our blood root. So these are really cool. They, they, they've got these finger like projections. This would have had a really pretty white flower. They've already gone. They're one of the first flowers in spring. So a lot of people really like them because they're one of the first flowers. Now, why is it called blood root? Um, normally I'd say I wouldn't do this because my wife would get mad, but she's actually watching us. So Maybe I'll grab a one that's already mangled in here. Um, if you grab this, see how it, particularly if you get closer to the stem, it'll be kind of a, yeah, this isn't as bad. Usually if you get right at the base of it, it'll, well, you can kind of see. It's, it looks like I'm, right? It looks like it's bleeding. Um, I don't remember if it's poison or not. Isn't it like a... Sanguine. You don't want to have it in high doses. Yeah. So, um, okay. um, our garden is pathetic, but um, let me just point out a couple quick things. So, here's Brussels sprouts. This is fun. We never harvested last year. If you don't harvest them, they're they're actually um, they're actually really good later. You can eat them raw. Um, they're sweeter. I remember. These are the apical, or they're the, the apical meristems for next year. So these were the overwintering buds. And if we don't collect this real quick, it'll just become this big mess, which that's starting to do. These are all, this is garlic. It's a good monocot, um, but it's also a good liliaceae. At least it used to be liliaceae. They split up the family. The same with um, onions over there. 
Onions are easier because they're, they're round. Um, how would I really know that these are garlic or onion? Well, you eat some. If it tastes like garlic, it's garlic. If it tastes like onion, it's onion. If it doesn't taste like either of those, spit it out. Um, just because we're here, uh, there's fennel. So fennel is actually FACA. FACA is, um, you know, one that you need to know. Oftentimes fennels, well, fennels have real dissected leaves. Most FACAs have these real dissected leaves. I wouldn't just go eating random FACA though, because FACAs will kill you. I know this is fennel because I planted it. Um, so let's just look in my yard, which uh, could use some um, love, if you will. But I actually love it because there's all kinds of weeds in here. So you should remember what this was. It's a violet. There's lots of weeds in here that have actually really cute little flowers. Those are gonna be some, I'm not gonna tell you all these because they're probably some of the, the easiest things you can identify for your herbarium assignment. But you should know this one, dandelion. Uh, let me grab a different one, you can stay there. Um, so if you tear this apart, remember each one of these, each one of these is a flower, right? So you can see the stamen, you can see the petals are fused here. Um, so actually that's the style. Um, I don't know if I can see any stamen, but you can see the style for sure. And um, so each one of these is a flower. So when you hold a dandelion, it's a whole bouquet. So if you give uh, your significant other uh, an Asteraceae, it's very cost effective because you give them a whole bouquet in one, 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 one flower. Um, this white one is one that you guys should know the family anyhow. Fortunately, these are already starting to go to seed. These are silicules, uh, but they're not quite open yet. These will burst open and then shoot out. Um, but the flowers, I don't know, if, maybe this one, um, I don't know if you can really see that or not. They're, okay, um, makes the square. There's actually two there. I can't quite separate the other. Um, brass caseae. So it has the cross. Uh, a lot of your, your weeds in early spring are brass caseae. The broccoli was actually a brass caseae. Okay. Um, all right, let's go over here. Oh, before we do. These are blackberries. You don't need to know blackberry or raspberry or black raspberry. Um, separately, you just need to know them collectively. So how would you know? Well, it's got the thorns. They've got serrate leaves. They're trifoliate. Uh, it's the rose family. And then if you're keen one out, you know, I always ask my class, how do you know the difference between a blackberry, a raspberry, and a black raspberry? Well, if you key it out, one of them has a raspberry. The other one has a black raspberry and the other one has a blackberry. I don't remember which I just said, but that's how you know. Um, so, so you can't came out without, without the berry, but I know what it is because the, the black raspberries are just bigger. They're, they're really big. I mean, they can get really tall. You can see some of these um, and they have much bigger thorns. They're just much more robust. You can get horticultural varieties now without the, without the thorns, um, but blackberry. Um, we go over here. White cedar. Okay, this is your really common shrub that is planted between two houses. It can be a, a, a small tree. It's got these scales that overlap. So the needles are these scales that overlap. Um, I don't see any cones right now, but they just be real tiny little cones. Um, you can get these any size, little ones, big ones, because they're all clones. So these are huge, but um, typically nowadays, if people are planting them, they, they want smaller ones that make for a better um, fence, if you will, between you and your neighbors. But white cedar. We've got 
over here, the little fiddleheads are just coming up. You can't quite tell this, but I can kind of put my hand in between. You can see the sterile or the sterile frond and then the fertile frond. So this is your ostrich fern. Um, back in here, this yellow flower, um, I'll try to hold one of these steady. This is actually a buttercup. Um, and um, what makes it a buttercup is tons of little pistols that are unfused and tons of stamen. Um, it's actually an invasive, but oh well. I kind of leave it there because it's pretty. Um, most of the yard is a bunch of invasives. We're in the middle of town, so I don't feel bad about it. Um, more ostrich ferns. You can't really tell because there's no leaves yet, but these are grapevines. One of the characteristics of grapevine is it's this flaky, the flaky bark. And um, these are uh, these are lilies, they, but they're good monocots. Um, I I didn't I don't think I added lily to your to your list. They they flower later in the summer. There's, there's another lily over there. There's kind of two general forms of lilies. Ones that come from the all the leaves come from the base, and then ones where you'd call these colline leaves. They're leaves that come off the stem. Okay, and. Well, keep moving around. Um, oh, good, we got some other. Uh, we'll go around there. Um, periwinkle is this uh, purple flower. It's a ground cover, it's a real common ground cover. So, this is a vine and it'll cover an area and it's not native, but is becoming nat or is naturalized and it'll take over a park if you let it. So you should feel guilty if you live by a park and you have it because you'll wipe out the natives, but it's real pretty. You know, when I go biking right now, um, kind of in nature areas, it makes me sad because I see it all over the place. Um, above it here, these are actually blueberries. You can't tell right now, though. Um, real soon they'll have they'll have berries. Uh, but one that you can tell, instead of white cedar, this is now red cedar. And I guess it looks a little reddish. But but these have the scales again that overlap. Um, you would the way to really know them is they'd have little berries, whereas white cedar has cones. Um, and I don't know if the one the other one in the yard has berries, but when we go to campus, there's some with, with berries for sure. Okay. And, um, it's all that's right here. Let's go here. There was a really good brassica here. Okay. So I'm not going to actually tell you what this one is. It's a real common weed that you guys might be able to key out. Um, but see how it's got the square? Let me hold it again. See how it's got the square or the cross-like petals? So that's a good brass casea. The way you identify brass casea is actually not by the flower, which is unusual. You actually identify it by the silicules or the pods. So all these, um, you know, this is the same family as this. And so all these pods, the pods are actually how you would identify them. Um, but these aren't, they haven't quite ripened yet. Okay, if we come over this way. Uh, sorry, open yet. Um, you don't need to know this one, but it's really cool. So this is a horse chestnut. And then, so this is a compound leaf. And so it's palmate. There aren't many palmate uh, compound leaved plants in, in Michigan. And then this will be a really big, um, nice inflorescence. So it'll get about this big. And this one happens to be purple. Most of them are white. It is actually a native. I 
don't think I put it on your list. I don't remember. Um, we're actually stepping in a bunch of great moss. Um, it doesn't have sporophytes though. We'll, we'll go to some parks for, with some good sporophytes. But if you don't over spray your, if you don't spray your yard, it'll be a bunch of weeds and some of those weeds would be really cool. And that would be like this. Um, if we come over here, these, these are all um, currants or gooseberries um, and they're all edible but they're also all native and so um, usually they have thorns of course these are horticultural varieties so this one this one's got the thorns uh, this one's got flowers you see the bees going around to them um, but see the thorns they've got a pretty distinctive leaf it looks like a maybe a small maple and um, I oftentimes confuse them with rose because of the thorns, but it, it's its own family. It starts with a G, I forget. It's on your list. Um, and, but, but so the way you'd really know it is the berries. And so you could have black, um, black currants and red currants. Um, and then there's also green ones. And this is actually all three of them. Uh, the different ones. This is another one. This is the, this is the red currant. Um, and next to this, this is a witch hazel. Now it's hard to tell right now because the leaves are so small. But these are the flower. These are the these are the flowers. Um, this one's a pretty good one. Um, so they're these real small, but you can see a bunch of them. They actually flowered a long time ago. And they, they just kind of left there. They, they kind of dry up and are there. Um, they, they do have round leaves, which makes them unusual. So here's some that are more open. So they're, they, they come real close to round. Now they'll get a lot bigger than that. But there aren't many things that have round, even close to round leaves that are trees anyhow. This will be a small tree. Of course, this one's a small shrub because it's a horticultural variety, but um, this is actually a honeysuckle. Honeysuckles, real easy, opposite leaves, okay? Um, and then they'll be a lot easier with the flowers. But you can see the flower buds. And see how the flower buds are coming out in twos? So they're, they're actually attached to each other. Um, see how they're, they're attached to each other? So anytime you see the, the attached to each other, then that's going to be the honeysuckle. There's a bunch of honeysuckles in Michigan. They're, um, they're, they're quite invasive. Um, we've got a willow here. Willow, long skinny leaves, serrate, alternate. Um, this isn't a weeping willow, but close enough. And then um, remember, neat thing about willows is they've got aspirin in them. So you don't, technically it's the bark, but you wouldn't want to eat this. So what you do is you cut off a, a piece of the, so if, you know, this course is giving you a headache, um, and, and this is true anywhere in the world, you just cut off a, a little piece of one of the twigs and chew on it, and, and that's like taking an aspirin. And I mean, it doesn't taste real good, but, but you can do it. Um, We've got a pine here. So this is a horticultural variety. Okay, good, I, I thought I had. So this is actually a red pine. Um, you can't, um, so red pines are real easy because, um, actually, maybe, these should break. Of course, this is a horticultural variety, so it's not as good, but it's got two needles. And so the needles are coming from one, from one point, and you can see there's just two of them coming from one point. We'll see white pine in a moment. Um, right here, we've got 
a U. U's would be real easy because they'd have the red aerials, um, but that's later in the season. So right now it's a shrub. This is actually native, um, but so they, they'll, they'll, it's a gymnosperm, so it's evergreen. This is your common shrub in front of an old 50s house. It's the one that you kind of got to whack back all the time. But again, they have the red aerials, uh, which are poisonous. And that's where you get um, your first, your first chemotherapy drug came from Taxus, Taxol. Um, okay. And so here is a, a larynx uh, or a tamarack. Um, tamaracks, you can't really tell right now. Um, the, but yeah, you can kind of start to see. The needles all come out in a fan. I've kind of squished a little bit. They all come out in a fan, but it's deciduous, which is really weird for a pine, if you will, pine family. So it lost all its needles. They're all coming out now in the spring and they'll come out as a fan. We'll see these at the bog. This is actually the European variety. But, um, okay, so now, um, all right, let's, let's do this one first. So, because it's got flowers. Okay, so this is, oh, I don't have my hand lens. I don't remember now. Um, so this is a viburnum, okay? This is um, nana berry. Um, but so what makes a viburnum a viburnum? Because we're, we're gonna see a bunch of viburnums. So if you look, it's a syme. Inflorescence, so it looks like an umbel. They all come to one point, but they don't start from one point. They come from different points. So it's got a cyme inflorescence and opposite leaves. Okay, see, see, and you don't always have to see leaves. You can see the branches are all opposite too. Okay, so it's not just leaves that are opposite. It's the whole branching pattern because branches come from leaves. Um, so opposite leaves and a cyme. If it's a shrub with opposite leaves and a cyme, I think it's pretty much a viburnum in Michigan. Now viburnum's the generic term. The this the you don't need to know this particular one, but it's a nana berry. Uh, which are edible or wild raisin. This one here, I don't think you can see it with the, but maybe you can see little red dots. Um this is aronia. Aronia will have uh, little berries and they're edible and it's a common shrub and it's real high in antioxidants and I've seen it in bogs and some other places, but it's a common shrub you can plant. Oh, the Costco on 28th Street, all the shrubs in between are aronia and there's one day I just sat and ate a bunch of them and everyone looked at me like I was a wacko. Um, we've got service berry. Now this is great because it's in good flower. So, so let's talk about um, this is a rose family. Rose family, if I, if I just remove the petals, and maybe I'll rip this in half, um, you can see the pistol. I don't know if you can see that very well, but it's in a cup. Um, so, but you can see here, see how fat the base is? So um, it's a cup. So, so, so all your road, and so if you look on the inside, it looks like a bowl that everything's in. So the, the stamen and stuff are inside this bowl. So anytime you have this bowl shape, um, we'll see this a lot more as things open. These are just one of the first ones open. So this bowl shape, um, it's called a hypanthium. So if you see a hypanthium, it's almost always a rose. Remember we looked at the, the rose back there. This also, Sometimes you'll see stipules. They don't always. Um, they are going to be serrate leaves. Service berry, it, in my mind, they're fairly distinctive kind of oval-shaped leaves, but uh, there's a lot of stuff that looks like that. So the way you'd know it would be the berries later in the... Uh, the other term is June berries. Um, they're one of the first berries. They're, they're way before cherries. Um, 
and so it's this hypanthium um, so so you should know I could just show you a picture of a rose family flower and you should be able to figure that out because of that hypanthium so that kind of fat at the base so great service berry uh, people call it service berry because it provides great service it's really pretty in the spring with beautiful flowers it's pretty in the summer uh, because early summer because it's got the red berries which are pretty but also edible and then in the fall it has really pretty uh, orange foliage so so it that's that's why it gets the term service berry so it's really commonly planted oh the traffic light going into grand valley right before that is all service berry um, hard to tell when you're going 50 miles an hour but but it is okay so let's look at this um all the flowers come to the same point but they start at different points and it's got opposite leaves starts with a v viburnum okay so this is another viburnum um we've got a beach here they're not open yet but that's kind of nice because you can actually see i i showed you a picture earlier um just when i was talking branching patterns um they've kind of got these bronze bronze colored buds so that's real distinctive kind of long skinny uh, bronze colored buds that, that's distinctive for a beach they've also got the flat um the bark that's totally smooth it's a totally smooth bark so uh good beach this is actually a tri-colored beach uh, it's too bad it's not open yet it's got real pretty pink leaves um if uh if you look in there there's a white violet i mentioned that violets don't have to be violet um, okay. see what happens if you don't um, add fertilizer and weed killer to your yard you could actually have a really pretty it's actually really pretty uh, so. all right let's um let's do this next one here it's harder to tell but these do come to one point and they start at different points and they're opposite leaves. So again, this is another viburnum. Super common shrubs. Many of your shrubs in Michigan that are planted are viburnum. So here again, uh, you can't really see, well, they're just opening, so it's hard to tell, but this would be a cyme again, opposite leaves. Um, this is actually high bush cranberry. It's not related to cranberries at all. It's a viburnum, but it has red berries and it's a high bush, if you will. So high bush cranberries. So the color's right, but that's about it. Um, if we come over here, almost all your bulbs coming up early in the spring are lily family, or at least old lily family. So, um, so you don't need to know this, but um, daffodils, um, but you know, one, two, three petals, um, one, two, three sepals, they're actually fused. And then um, these are extensions of the petals. Uh, so it's kind of weird, horticultural stuff. But um, three petals, three sepals, they're actually fused. So they look like little lilies, liliaceae. Most of your bulbs this time of year are Liliaceae. Hey, okay. We don't, um, so Spirea, I don't think I put this on your list today, but it will be on a later list. If you look at these, I don't know if you can see that. Um, see how um, it looks like a star? There's five carpels. They all open on the inside. And if you look from the side, it looks like a, um, oh like a burger king crown or something so if you um i don't know if you can see i don't know if it's better in the i think shade. it's better just hold it up there and i can okay so you can see the five carpels and they all open on the inside so this is spirea that those carpels all opening on the inside is a really easy diagnostic for it and uh, spireas there's a lot of different spireas that are planted in the yard because they've got pretty foliage. But that, that the fruit is really distinctive. The leaves aren't that distinctive. They're just kind of a serrate alternate leaf. Um, but the, the fruit is really 
that's spirea. If you see that, you know it's spirea. Um, here's another pine. So two needles, they all come from the same point. Um, is uh, it should be breaking. Um, it's a. I'm pretty sure this is a red pine. Um, all right, let's do up here, and then we're almost done. These are nice Ericaceae again. So we've got three different Ericaceae right next to each other. This is an Azalea. Unfortunately, they're not open yet. We've got a Rhododendron. And then this is actually a, a Mountain Laurel. But they've all got this real waxy leaves that are evergreen. And then they'll have real showy flowers as well. There's some open that we'll get to in just a moment. But so again, around here, the only place you'd really find Ericaceae is in the bog, but they're, 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 they're an understory shrub in South Carolina native, but we can plant them anywhere if you put them protected. Usually you see azaleas and rhododendrons against the house because it protects them in the winter. Um, and so these are doing great. You can see that huge one there. It's doing great. You have to plant it in the right spot. Okay, we've got holly here. Okay. So, unfortunately, I don't see any berries. For, okay, so there's one berry. Uh, the birds love them. So, um, there's a bird feeder here. So, the birds come in and then they eat them all. And then the hollies are easy. They, they've got the pokey, um, uh, these real distinctive leaves. They're tough. They're evergreen. Everyone plants them in the yard. They are naturalized. I mean, they're, they're invasive um, in Michigan, anyhow. Okay. Uh, most of the rest of this is horticultural stuff, but unfortunately they're not open yet. There is a whole bunch of, you can't tell right now. Um, it was on your list, but I could just scratch. Well, I'll give you some pretty pictures uh, of spider wart. These are spider warts. Um, so I'll put some pictures on the on the web. The, they, they're an early summer, um, late I mean, I wouldn't be shocked to see some flowers in the next three weeks, but they're not out yet. We've got ewes again. I was hoping to find uh, the fleshy aerial, but the, the birds eat them. Um, so I'm not seeing any. We've got, again, Ericaceae. So we've got different Ericaceae here. There are all these leathery, um, leathery evergreen leaves that are um, fairly distinctive. And then this is the, you know, the flowers for the, this would look like a blueberry. Blueberry is an Ericaceae. And then the rhododendron over here. So this is our first rhododendron in flower. And um, they're real showy. You, you should be seeing lots of these opening right now as you go on your neighborhood walks they're they're gorgeous um and we've got a bunch of them we've got so let's look at these real quick i didn't we haven't talked about this yet but but you guys all know maples so they're, they're, they're just starting to open how do you know it's a maple well it has maple like leaves how is it maple life it lobed with these serrations, but then they're opposite leaves. There aren't that many things that are opposite leaves. I keep saying opposite leaves because they're the only things with opposite leaves, and I don't bother to say alternate. But then they've got these winged paired samoras, and I thought I saw some that were actually uh, a little bit more open. Um, maybe not. So these will have the little helicopter guys that come down. So these are the flowers right now just opening. Um, but this is a horticultural one. This is a Japanese maple, and it's a yellow Japanese. Oftentimes, you'll get the red Japanese maples. Um, if we go, oh, um, we should just do the birch real quick. Uh, birch, easy to know birch because of the bark. Okay, there's no leaves yet, but you can see catkins. 
see the catkins hanging down and the leaves will be coming out pretty quick. They're triangular, um, doubly serrate, uh, but the catkins are pretty... <laughs> okay, so over here we've got... Um, I'm not going to do many grasses because they're, they're not, they're, they're difficult for people. They're even more difficult if we're just doing this online. But this is just a, it's a good one to know because, um, because it's of importance for native communities. Um, this is sweet grass. And uh, here, Chloe, um, it, if you chew on these, it's really sweet. I mean, it's, it's, it's I always like to pick my teeth with these things, but um, but these ones taste really good. So that that that's really the way I would know this one. But we will talk um, grass flower parts later. Um, but you can, I don't know if you can really see. They're not quite ripe enough yet. Um, but there actually are two florets in each of these spikelets. We'll go through all those terms later. For now, they taste good. And um, so Native Americans, this has got, um, you would um, use sweet grass to, for a lot of ceremonies, you'd burn it and it gives off kind of a sweet smell to it. It is a native. Um, you can get it sometimes in plant stores. It's not common, but, um, but certainly Native Americans know it real well. Um, We've got evergreen leaves, real showy flowers. So this would have to be what family? Starts with an E, Ericaceae. Uh, so again, more rhododendron slash azaleas. And let me just go through our list real quick. Um, I did not give you, so I'll just, um, I'll just read these real quick. So ostrich ferns we did, Christmas fern we did not do. So. I wouldn't cross anything off because we're just going to do it at the next place. Maidenhair we did see, it was just barely coming up. The wild ginger we saw, dandelions are everywhere. May apple. I didn't do wood sorrel. There's good wood sorrel here. Um, wood sorrel, where's... Oh, come on, there's got to be a ton. It's, uh, there's some right here. Okay. It's just, uh, usually there's a ton of it. Um, so see how it's got the the little um, spade-like or arrow-shaped leaves, and then what's really cool about this one is it's um, it's edible, and it's um, it's actually pretty good. I mean, a lot of stuff that's edible just doesn't kill you. Um, this one's actually pretty good. It's kind of lemony, and um, super common weed, and usually the whole yard is. Wood sorrel, or sorry, not wood sorrel. This is um, red sorrel. Um, I didn't point out wood sorrel either. Usually, there's a bunch of that. It also tastes similar, but I'm not seeing any wood sorrel at all. So let's just keep going through. I didn't point out potentilla. There, the flowers aren't open yet, so let's not do it. So that the red was the um, red sorrel, violet. Saw a bunch of. My jack in the pulpit's not up yet. The spider wart's not really good. I'll show you some pictures. We did do a bunch of aliums, so it'd be easier to remember alium than all these other names. But your garlic, your leeks, um, onions, chives, those are all the same thing. Lily, we saw a bunch of lilies. They're not in flower yet. Trillium, they hadn't quite opened, but there were a bunch of them. We'll see a bunch more later. Sweetgrass, we, I just ate some. The uh, periwinkle, it's the invasive. All, these are all vines that are invasive. I didn't point out Virginia creeper. I don't feel like going back over there. We're gonna see so much of that other places. The grapevine isn't open yet. I showed you some holly. We've seen a bunch of viburnums. I didn't point out a euonymus. Um, let's just skip that. We're gonna see lots of them other places. The dogwood's not open yet. Uh, rhododendron azalea, we saw a bunch of. I showed you blueberry, but you couldn't tell. We saw a bunch of the currants and gooseberries. Remember, those have got the little thorns and then they have the berries. Witch hazel, those are the ones that flower over the winter. 
Uh, chokeberry is aronia. I just said it is aronia. Um, so chokeberry, that's the one that's got real lots of antioxidants and has little red dots. The Japanese rose is the, the one that's kind of invasive everywhere. Willows all over. Um, maple in general, you should know. I didn't point out the box elder. Um, let's just skip that. We'll see it lots of other places. I didn't point out silver maple either. We'll skip that. We'll see that lots of places. We saw the birch. I didn't point out the red bud. We'll see that other places. Lots of places. Uh, tulip tree. Are the leaves? Let's go look at the tulip tree. Tiny, 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 but you can see, um, you can see they're real distinctive. I think of these as um, little vampire teeth, but it's, it's such a distinctive leaf. These leaves will get big, bigger than my hand. They're just coming out right now, but it's got, uh, and this is, this is an unusual one that I got from my beautiful wife, and uh, it's a yellow kind of malted, colored one. Usually they're just a flat green, but it's a real distinctive leaf. And then they have the tulip-like flowers, but it's um, it's a really big tree, so you don't usually see the tulip-like flowers. Um, the other thing is a lot of people plant tulip trees thinking, oh, tulip tree, I'll put it in my cute little flower garden. It's actually one of the largest trees in North America, so that's a stupid idea. Um, all right, let's just do finish this up real quick. I didn't point out the magnolia because it's not open. Um, I didn't point out the mulberry because they're not open. Um, we saw a bunch of service berry. I didn't point out crab apples. All your apples are in the same, uh, the way you'd know them would be the apples. Uh, cottonwood, I didn't point out. We'll see it other places. Basswood is, the leaves aren't open yet. We should see it other places. Elm, the leaves, let's do the elm. This is a little wimpy one, um, but it shows the characteristics. They're just really small. We'll see these everywhere. It's a common, we, so, so here's the, the leaf. So they're um, doubly serrate leaves. Kind of hard to see that because they're so small. But then it's oblique. It's uneven at the base. That's the term oblique. So if you've got doubly serrate, strongly pinnate venation, um, and oblique at the base, it's going to be an elm. There's several species. The other thing is the, the bark is usually kind of squishy, uh, depending on the, the species. So that, that's an elm. We'll see them other places, and they should have bigger leaves. And then we did the red cedar, we did the white cedar, we did tamarack, we did a, a couple pines, and the yew. So that was our list. We got to our first, uh, first lab. Uh, make sure to do the activity uh, under the assignments. Okay.